Andrew McGahan for Severe MMA here at Battlezone Fighting Championship standing alongside a victorious Joe McColgan. And I think we've thrown ourselves back to 2013 as Joe McColgan made his successful pro debut tonight, ladies and gentlemen. How many years are we waiting for this? This is what I said before going out to the fight with them. I was like, this is three years in the making. I haven't fought in a year and a half, but I've been trained flat out, non-stop, um, in, in the gym, pretty much every day training for something, whether it was the Europeans in the room or even going out to train jiu-jitsu in Munich. Um, I, I'm in the gym every day. And like I said, yeah, three years ago, maybe two or three years ago, I wanted to go pro. And then there was a series of setbacks, uh, the amateur world championships that prevented me from going pro. But now it's finally happened. There was no excuses and uh, no reason for me not to fight. So it, it finally happened and I think it was a success. I said on the podcast that uh, this week, I said people are like, oh, but he hasn't fought in so long, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, maybe it's because I saw that work firsthand. I've seen how much that improvement has happened. And I think for you, going pro at this time benefits your career much better than going pro two years ago. Yeah, well, listen, I just took out the number one welterweight in the country at amateur level. Boys weren't afraid to take us. Why did he, did he not say in one of your interviews, I have to go pro because I'm finding it difficult to get fights? And I mean, I went through him there. I didn't go through him easily. Like, it was a very hard fought fight, but I mean, I didn't feel in danger at any point. And uh, I forgot what you actually asked me there. So It's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> Talk to me about the fight, though. There was a little confusion throughout it. Uh, it looked like the guillotine was very close at the first round, and you got yourself absolutely covered in blood because of it. Um, yeah, I can't even remember how I got into that guillotine. I think it, I think he went there for a takedown. Um, and there was like a front head choke uh, I locked in. I don't really do them, so I didn't know if it was on or not. Uh, I squeezed like fuck, like uh, it, it didn't work. So uh, I was kind of hoping it would, but it wouldn't. But I, I had plenty of energy after that there. It was actually in the third, I was saying to one of the boys there that uh, like I really squeezed that rear naked choke on as hard as I could. And I was on until about three seconds after I thought he would tap, he tapped. Like he's, he's a t real tough guy. Like there was no way he was going to tap that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. From his striking though, it seemed like he was lunging in and you were more content to make a miss yeah. I know striking is something you've worked on a bit your yeah. boxing seemed pretty crisp yeah that, 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 my, uh, my boxing coach Donald McNally you know said they've been working flat out I've been working with him for a year and a half now and out of the gym I went down to the Ulster Intermediates as boxing I'm sparring against pros and I, I'm doing well and against boxing pros like I, that, that is one area that I really want to concentrate on and I think it showed in there he was coming in out of range and I was in range the whole time and felt comfortable. There were, yes, he had a few flurries where uh, he tagged me, uh, but I mean, that, that's the fight game. You're always going to get hit. Like You're never going to miss every single shot. Like you know, Look at McGregor, he gets hit as well. I'm not comparing myself to him, by the way. I'm just saying. Joe, Ma <laughs> Joe McColgan compares himself to Conor McGregor, 2015. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the performance. Like, you had a really good performance today, didn't you? Well, since you brought it up, Joe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Broken finger, but we'll get through it. I probably pretty much broken my thumb. But here, let, let me tell you a story. I actually was not. There was a point in this. I, I heard one thing from the crowd, okay? I heard, I hope Thomas Hogan doesn't jab Joe McColgan because he's a broken nose. Yeah, a completely smashed nose. I was in the hospital and a smashed foot. I was sparring Daggy McAleen, absolute beast, going to destroy James Gallagher uh, next weekend. But I was sparring him on Saturday and I got my nose broke and I had to be carried out of the gym by Donard. I could not walk on my foot. It was until Tuesday I was able to walk, went to the hospital, and they tried to fix my nose four times. And they were like, nah, you need surgery to fix that there. So I couldn't breathe through my nose. I could barely walk. I was getting ice baths, massages all week uh, just to try and bring it to some kind of like fightable level. And so I honestly feel like I went in there and I was 50, 60% of what I could have been like, you know. Finally then, end of the third round, most impressive part of the fight, I thought, he had you pinned up against the cage. It looked like maybe he's on his way to grinding out uh, that round, and yeah. who knows what it's going to the decision. Yeah. You hit a switch, a wrestling switch, similar to, um, we saw it in the UFC a couple of weeks ago, and I can't even think of, think of their name, yeah. but what you did, beautiful switch, beautiful back take, finished with a rear naked choke. Yeah, it was just so smooth. I trained with Pat McAllister, uh, one of the best wrestlers, in my eyes, that, I've, you know, that we have in the land. Um, even the guys in the land. Them. In the land, in the land, Ireland, UK. I, I don't think there's a beast like him. So I'm in the train, train of him every day, and he's putting me up against the cage. I'm finding them very small gaps against him. I'm going to find them against the guys like Tom Hogan and stuff, you know. And like I did in the end of the third round, when I was tired, there was blood everywhere. I still managed to pull that switch off, and it was instant. It wasn't, it wasn't as if it was sitting there all the time. As soon as he moved his head to the outside, boom, straight away, just reacted to it. And that's from training with the likes of Pat. 
But here, let me give a shout out oh, to uh, well, I have, well, look, a strength and condition coach. I always fought at 70 kilos and I'm moving up to 77 gradually. This is just the catch weight. And it's nice to a guy called Paul Murphy. Um, he's really, really helped me. Uh, done a lot for me, so he has over the past year and a half. I just wanted to give a shout out to him. Strength and condition coach, Paul Murphy. Yes, be fit. That all, is it? Yeah, that's all. Grand. No Thank problem. you very much. Thanks. So See much. you soon. Thank you.